guys, it's finally here. Very excited about it. Can't wait to see what it sounds like. My wish is for God to have the very best for his house, to have a better piano than any of us ever had in our homes. Kind of like Solomon's Temple. God deserves our very best. It's not about giving God hand-me-downs. It's about giving him hand-me-ups. My husband and I have been a part of the Granite Bay Church since day one. When I realized we had our own place of worship, I knew we were missing a very important piece in our church, and that's how the piano fund started. How little did I realize that during the piano fundraising process, God would bring about two miracles. The first was the piano, and the second was the change on my heart. Through the process of giving to experience the blessings from heaven that were poured out again and again. God moved on others' hearts, the piano store, and then the church family, who gave so we'd have this piano to complete our worship experience. After much research and trying out numerous pianos, I concluded that our large sanctuary should have a nine-foot concert grand piano. This piano is designed to fill a sanctuary, uh, to be heard through a hundred-piece orchestra, or to play very subtly very delicate music. I prayed and I asked God, am I being selfish for wanting the concert grand piano since I am one of the church pianists? After praying, I turned this over to the Lord and that is when the miracle happened. To put it in the words of my friend Jim Nelson, who sold the piano to us. I was shocked. Of course, the piano actually sells closer to $200,000. And I thought maybe on a very generous move from Yamaha, uh, placing it into a house of worship that they would would offer it maybe for half of that. And here we are for half of half of that. So it's it's a miracle. It was meant to be. It was that's all. It was just meant to be. It, it found its it found its new home. Welcome. We want to welcome our online viewers who are joining us from across the country and around the world for this exciting dedication concert here at Granite Bay Seventh-day Adventist Church. Well, of course, we want to welcome each and every one of you who are with us here in the sanctuary. Michelle, you are part of this, the fundraising for this amazing miracle that we have, and I know that you are a woman of words. What would you like to share with us? I would like to thank our entire church, our online viewers, and every single person who contributed towards the piano. Thank you. One of the greatest and most beloved composers, Johann Sebastian Bach, acknowledged his musical talent as a gift from heaven. It was no secret that the aim of his musical career was to write music for the Lord and to the glory of God. Bach signed his cantatas SDG, Sole des Gloria, meaning to the glory of God alone. And so it is my wish, as we thank God for this piano, that we dedicate it solely and completely to the glory of God alone. The first piece that will be performed for us this afternoon is Michelle on the piano and Danny Kwan on the cello. And I'm going to tell you that it is Jesu Joy of Man's Desiring, an excerpt from Bach's 10th cantata and the last movement. And here are the words. Jesus, all my joy remaineth, my heart's solace and my stay. All my wounds to heal, he, he dineth. On him all my need I lay. He's my heart's fond hope and treasure, my soul's rapture and dearest pleasure. He is with me day and night, ever in my heart and sight.
the sky shall unfold, preparing his entrance, the star shall applaud.
If you stumble or fall, don't worry, don't waver, just follow your call.
And all those who seek it shall find it a pardon for all who believe. Hope for the hopeless, and sight for the
mercy prophecies fulfilled and the signs of the times they're appearing
Thank you so much, Anderson. I'll bet your parents never dreamed when they named you that it would be a self-fulfilling prophecy. <laughs> that was beautiful. Well, we're so thankful to have each of you here just to uh, celebrate with us. We know, of course, we have a number of the uh, Granite Bay Church family here and quite a few visitors. And we're just delighted that you joined us today, a special time to just praise God with uh, song and to celebrate that uh, he's blessed us with this new facility to minister and to worship, and we just uh, give him the glory. Uh, very appropriate, my tribute. You know, it, when you think about music and praise, it, it's amazing. I mean, here you've got a room full of people that have come together to listen to vibrations and sound waves. Of course, you wouldn't be listening to words if it was just meaningless sounds. There needs to be some coherency to it, and so it is with music. But there's a power in music that God also mentions in His Word. One story in particular jumps out at me, and it's in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. It talks about a king, Jehoshaphat, good king. And he brought a lot of reforms to Israel, and the Lord was blessing the kingdom, and they were finally fulfilling what God had designed for Israel. They were teaching the people throughout the kingdom about God and the goodness of God and the holiness of God, and other nations were learning, and the enemy was threatened by that. And so the Bible tells us in Second Chronicles 20, after all these wonderful things and this revival was taking place, you know, the devil won't stand still. It happened after this that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others besides them with the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. And someone came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Syria. And they are in Hazi and Tamar, which is in Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared, and he set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all of Judah. So Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord and all the cities of Judah, and they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah in Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court, and he said, O Lord God of our fathers, are not you God in heaven above, and do you not rule over all the kingdoms and the nations? And your hand is there, not power and might, so that no one is able to withstand you? Are you not our God? who drove out the inhabitants of the land before your people Israel to give it to your descendants of Abraham, your friend forever? And after he, he pleads and he prays and he talks to the Lord, then suddenly a prophet stood up among them. And the prophet said, Listen, all of you of Judah, inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you, King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord, don't be afraid of this great multitude or be dismayed, because the battle is not yours, but it's the Lord's. Tomorrow, go down against them. They'll surely come up against the ascent of Ziz, which was a rock area down there. And you'll find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jehiel. And you will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord God who is with you. You know, that's something that the Lord said when the Egyptians were hard on the back of the Israelites as they came up against the Red Sea. Stand still, God said through Moses and you'll see the salvation of the Lord. Have you ever felt like you're surrounded by the enemy and trouble on every side or terror and panic and it looks like death is imminent? And sometimes the Lord says the only answer is to stand still and give it to God and watch and see what He'll do. And then it makes a strange statement. It says when they finally came out into the wilderness and off in the distance they could see the enemy was all gathered for battle. It says, when he consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness. And they went out before the army, and they were saying, praise the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. That's a psalm from Psalm 29. Matter of fact, that verse appears many times in the Psalms. Praise the Lord for His mercy endures forever. They're just going to go out into this battle and they're going to put the band out in front and they're going to praise. Well, that doesn't seem like very good tactics for a battle uh, unless you're hoping to make the enemy laugh themselves into surrender. 
And, I mean, here you've got three massive armies that have joined together to come and attack Israel, and they greatly outnumbered them, and they send a choir out. And the choir is singing positive songs of praise. Well, that doesn't make any sense at all unless you go by faith. You ever been in a situation where it just didn't look like there was any way out? Or maybe you got a bad lab report or your finances looked like everything was about to be repossessed or relationships were in tangles and frayed and sometimes you just don't know what to do. The Lord says, look, give it to me. And that's what they did. The people came together. They prayed. They threw it before the Lord. They claimed His promises from the past. And they said, now we're just going to give it to God. They consulted together and said, what should we do? What are our tactics? Which army do we put out in front first? And Jehoshaphat said, well, you know, God said, stand still. It's His battle. Let's put the choir out front. That doesn't make any sense unless you really believe. And it says that when they began to sing... And to praise the Lord, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and against Mount Seir, that's the Edomites, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. For the people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir. They began to distrust each other, and they turned on one another. There was treachery among them, and the armies that had originally formed a confederacy to go against God's people, they imploded in self-destruction. So finally, when the children of Israel came to the scene, the battle was over, and no two men were left standing. You know, it describes something like this at the end of the world, where it talks about Babylon and their forces will implode and turn on themselves. But the solution was sing. Praise the Lord. Even when you don't feel like it. Have you read about what happened in the book of Acts when Paul and Silas were in jail? In Acts chapter 16, verse 25, they'd been whipped, falsely charged, put in a prison, innermost prison, put in the stocks. Instead of moaning and complaining and saying, Lord, here we were doing mission work, we were serving you, we're doing what we thought you sent us to this town to do, and now look what's happened to us, and crying. They ignored the circumstances, and they said, we don't know what's happening, we don't know what the solution is. And they sang praises to God. Well, let me read it to you. Verse 25, Acts 16. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening. You know, people are listening when you choose to glorify God instead of gripe. And God's people are usually the best witness, not when he saves us from our trials, but we are the best witness through our trials. And if you ever doubt that, look at the cross. It was through the cross where Jesus was the greatest witness. And while they were singing and praising God, suddenly there's a great earthquake. The foundation of the prisons are shaken and immediately all the doors open and everyone's chains were loosed and it all started with singing and praising God. You know, I'm kind of talking to myself again, but I wonder sometimes if we don't praise the Lord often enough. It's easy to praise God when he parts the Red Sea and you get to the other side. But it's much harder to praise God before he parts to see. And that's what Jehoshaphat was doing. That's what Paul and Silas were doing. That's what Joshua did. It was a very short song when they march, marched around Jericho seven times on the seventh day. They played one note and they shouted. But I think they were praising God. And all of a sudden the battle was over. I wonder how many battles that we forfeited because we griped instead of glorifying God. You know, it's a wonderful thing when we can come together and, and sing God's praises. But even when we're alone, we need to le learn to sing and make melody in our heart. You know, that's what the Bible tells us. Making melody in our hearts and singing. And when we do that, God will bless. And you know, that's why I think it's such a wonderful time when we can come together like this and just as a friends and church family, thank the Lord for what he's done. Give him praise. But even when this program's over, let's remember to do it in our everyday lives. Amen? We're going to have one more song. We'll have our closing prayer and some announcements. But we want to thank you again for coming to celebrate with us during this special occasion. God bless you.
in pleasure and God in 